Are you looking to set up your very own home studio so you can start recording music in the privacy of your own home? There's a ton of information out there in the marketplace and it can get rather confusing for someone who's just starting out and just beginning. Well in this video we're going to take a look at the five key components of things that you need to consider when setting up your very own home studio, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com, the place where we talk about tips, tricks, concepts, and training around everything recording, mixing, and mastering so you can make better music in your home studio. My name is David Vignola. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out this week's video. If you like what you see in this video, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, be sure to go out to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com where there is a ton more free training content that is not included on our YouTube channel. Also, be sure to check out the show notes and the links provided in the description box below as there is a lot of great information about everything we're going to talk about in this week's video. So now let's get ready for this week's video. Hey everybody, welcome back. So in this week's video, we're going to take a look at setting up our own home recording studio. One of the things that I get lots of questions about on a weekly basis is what do I need to get started? There are so many YouTube videos, there is so much information out there online of people telling you what you need to buy, what you don't need to buy, how much do you need to spend, so on and so forth, and it can become very overwhelming. I so much understand that, and a lot of my students and a lot of my followers have asked me to kind of simplify things. What do I need to get started? And that's what this week's video is all about. So we're going to talk about the five key components of what you need to think about when you're going to set up your own home studio. Now the good news is it's not as uh, expensive as you may think. It, with today with the technology and the, and the price of technology has come down so much over the last four to five years that you could set up your very own home studio to start recording high quality uh, music productions for a very reasonable amount of money and I'm going to talk to you about that today. So this is really geared for the beginner, someone who's just starting out just wanting to set up their own home studio. We'll do another video where we talk about more advanced gear, more advanced concepts and, and training and, uh, and setups in another video. But for this video, this is just for the beginners. So let's start talking about those five key components. Okay, first thing you need to talk about is we need to talk about your computer. So obviously today with the technology, everybody is recording on a computer today. Now what kind of computer you need really doesn't matter. Is it Mac, is it PC? What do I need to buy? I get this question all the time. The good news is it really doesn't matter whether you use an Apple or whether you use a PC, it really doesn't matter. Whatever computer you already have in your home is probably sufficient enough to get started. You don't even necessarily have to go out and buy a brand new computer. However, if your budget allows and you can buy a computer that is dedicated to your studio where you just do music production, that is preferable. But if you don't have that in your budget, don't worry, any computer that you're watching this video on is probably sufficient. Now there's a couple of key things you want to think about when you choose your computer, whether it's a Mac or it's a P whether it's a PC. You want to try to max out the RAM in your computer um, as, as much as you can. So you want to take a look at the specs of your computer, see how much memory you have, and then do a little bit of research and find out what is the maximum amount of RAM that you can put in your computer. And I would highly suggest that you max out that RAM. RAM is extremely inexpensive today, and the more RAM you have in your computer, the more uh, speedy your computer is going to be. You're going to get much better performance when you're trying to record your own music. So that's super important. You want to have a minimum of at least eight gigabytes of RAM, but some computers today you can put up as much as 64 gigs or even 128 gigs. So again, take a look at the computer that you have, or if you're buying a new computer, take a look at the specs of what, you, of what the computer comes with as far as memory is concerned, and try to make sure that you maximize the amount of RAM. If you're buying a new computer just for your studio, that's great if you have money in your budget to do so. A couple other key things you want to look at when purchasing a new computer. You want to try to buy, again, something that has a, a lot of RAM in it or can be expanded to a lot of memory or RAM. And you also want to try to find a computer that has as fast of a processor as humanly possible. The faster the processor, the more RAM you have as far as memory goes, the more better performance you're going to get from your computer. Now one thing that I tell all beginners is you don't want to think about what you're doing today. You want to take a little bit of thought and care about what do you want your studio to be maybe a year or two years from now. Especially if you're buying a brand new computer and you're not going to use one that you already currently own. 
You may want to try to, if you can in your budget, you may want to try to overbuy the computer. Maybe buy something a step up above what you may already currently have or what you may think you need. So two years from now, you don't have to go out and replace your computer because it's outdated or it doesn't have enough of, of a fast processor, those kinds of things. So take care, take a look at what you currently have, what do you want your studio to become over the next couple of years, and then try to buy the computer accordingly. But again, Mac, PC, doesn't matter. Personally, I use a Mac, but you can use a PC. I have lots of friends that use PCs and they make great professional sounding music. Doesn't matter whether you have a Mac or PC. So that's component number one. Okay, component number two, the second thing you're gonna need for your home studio, you're gonna need an audio interface. Now again, there are a ton of uh, options out there that you can get for audio interfaces, but here are a couple of things you wanna kinda of keep in mind before you purchase your first audio interface. Now the good news is, and I tell all my beginners, you really don't need to spend more than two or $300 on an audio interface. You can get an audio interface for 99 bucks. Um, but one thing you wanna think about when you're purchasing your audio interface is how many inputs that you need. So in other words, you're gonna be plugging in your microphones, your guitars into your audio interface, and that is what is gonna capture the audio and get it into your computer. So you gotta kinda of think about, well, how many inputs do you need? Are you just a singer-songwriter, maybe uh, someone who sings and plays acoustic guitar? Well, then maybe you only need an audio interface with two inputs. Are you someone who's gonna to try to record an entire band? Drums, bass, guitar, all simultaneously. If that's the kind of studio that you want, that you're gonna be, or you think you're gonna be in the near future, you're gonna to wanna to buy an audio interface that has a minimum of eight inputs. And again, the good news is, you shouldn't have to spend any more than $300. Some of the companies you wanna take a look at for really good, high quality audio interfaces at a reasonable price is PreSonus. You can take a look at Focusrite. You can take a look at Motu. Those three companies, and there are others, but those three companies make really high quality products at a very reasonable price. And all the links for the products will be uh, below in the description box. So check them out. And the other thing you want to think about when we talk about an audio interface, you want to take a look at the connectivity between the audio interface and your computer. It can either be USB, it could be Thunderbolt, it could be Firewire. You want to take a look at what computer you're going to be using for your studio, what kind of connectivity do you have, and then make sure that you have those, uh, those, those output ports on your new audio interface. If you're using a Mac today, you'd probably be leaning more towards Thunderbolt, uh, or you can use USB 3. If you're using a PC, you may be using USB or even Firewire. Wire. So just take care that your computer's inputs, what kind of uh, connectivity do you have, and make sure that your new audio interface has that same kind of connectivity. Today's, all the interfaces today typically on the market will all have either FireWire or USB, and then even more so Thunderbolt today. So you want to take a look at that as well. The third thing you're going to need to think about when you're setting up your home studio is we got to talk about our digital audio workstation, or DAW. Now this is a huge topic and there are so many opinions and if you, uh, uh, out there online about which is the best DAW, quote unquote. Well, I'm here to tell you, first of all, there is no best DAW. The main, the main companies that have DAWs on the market today, PreSonus, Cubase, uh, Pro Tools, GarageBand, Apple Logic, Reaper, they're all fantastic digital audio workstations. I have used all of them and I can tell you they're all equally as good as far as what they can do. Now, if you're someone who is just starting out recording and has never really done any recording before, when you're choosing your DAW, there's a couple of things that you wanna keep in mind. First and foremost, you wanna to try to find online, do some research and see what uh, online resources are there to help you as you're learning how to use your new DAW. Because when you're first starting out, there could be somewhat of a steep learning curve and you wanna to try to find a DAW that's really user friendly, that has a really good online community. Now, I've used every DAW on the market, as I said, and the DAW that I recommend to all of my students is PreSonus Studio One. Now, PreSonus Studio One has a fantastic user community both on Facebook and on the PreSonus user forum as well as Home Recording Made Easy makes a lot of PreSonus training tutorials. There's a ton of great information online on how to use Studio One and how to get up and running very quickly. And the great news is most of that information is absolutely free. If you check out the Home Recording Made Easy YouTube channel, I have a 15 video beginner series, absolutely free, teaching you how to use the very beginning features and functions of Studio One, so that's one to consider. However, if you already have a DAW, for example, if you own a Mac, you already have GarageBand on your Mac. It's a free DA, uh, digital audio workstation. 
I would say use that if you don't have the budget to buy something else. If you already own Pro Tools or Cubase or Apple Logic, again, it really doesn't matter. The key is you wanna pick a digital audio workstation that you feel comfortable with. You wanna pick a digital audio workstation where there's a lot of online resources to help you if you get stuck. And if you can find free resources, that's even better. And once you've made that decision, you wanna stick with that digital audio workstation. You wanna learn it inside and out. And that takes time. Regardless of the DAW that you choose, you could spend six months to a year minimum using it you know, multiple times a week to really understand everything that these digital audio workstations have to offer. And the great news is, once you pick it, you really don't need to upgrade it from there. A lot of beginners that I find and a lot of students that I've had in the past, the mistake that they make is once they spend about six months working with a, di a digital audio workstation, if they're not happy with their productions, they tend to think because online will tend to make you believe or try to make you believe that by buying one digital audio workstation over another, it's gonna help you make better music or help you have a better quality production, a more professional sounding recording. And I'm here to tell you that's just simply not the case. Regardless of the DAW you use, you will be able to achieve a professional sounding recording if you learn it and if you practice, practice, practice. The digital audio workstation is just a tool. One is not really better than another. Do your research online. Talk to friends that may already have a digital audio workstation. See what they're using. And again, see what kind of free resources you can find online to help you as you're a beginner. And again, most of that training and most of those tools are absolutely free. And again, if you want my personal recommendation, I would say use PreSonus Studio One only because it is very intuitive, very user friendly, and there is an, an, an enormous amount of free online resources to help you get started. And the last thing I'll say about the digital audio workstation is that when you get your digital audio workstation, regardless of which one you buy, the temptation is to run out and buy a bunch of plugins to go along with it. Every digital audio workstation on the market today have a whole host of plugins that come with the program free of charge. And as I tell all of my beginner students, don't go out and invest your money in third-party plugins until you have understood and mastered the stock plugins. You can make an absolute professional sounding recording with just stock plugins. That is the number one thing that I see people make a mistake with. They feel like they need to have all these other special vintage style, analog style plugins to make a great recording. And that is just simply not the case. So if you're just starting out, pick your digital audio workstation, stick with the stock plugins, don't spend any more money until you've mastered that for six months or a year. And then, and only only then, if you want to consider upgrading to the next level, then you can talk about third-party plugins and all those other kinds of things. Okay, now that we've talked about our computer, our audio interface, and our DAW, the next thing we need to talk about, component number four, is we have to get a microphone, right? We need a microphone and we need some microphone cables in order to get our vocals or our guitar or whatever we're trying to record into our audio interface and into our digital audio workstation. So now when you're talking about microphones, again, the good news is there are thousands of microphones on the market that start off very inexpensively and can range up to thousands and thousands of dollars. Now the good news is you don't need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars when you first start out. I recommend if you're going to just buy one microphone, you want to buy a good multi-purpose microphone that could be good for acoustic guitar, good for vocals, good for bass, electric guitar, so on and so forth. I would recommend that you look for maybe a large diaphragm condenser microphone. And again, there are many, many manufacturers that make great large condenser uh, microphones very, very affordably. You can look at things like the Rode NT1A. You can take a look at Audio-Technica. You can take a look at MXL. These are all brand names that make microphones anywhere from $99 to $300. And I would tell you again, if you're also a beginner, you really don't need to spend any more than 300 bucks on your first microphone. But take a look at a large diaphragm condenser microphone that's $300 or less, or whatever your budget allows. Uh, read the reviews, do some research, and any one of those microphones is going to be good for uh, just starting out for a multi-purpose microphone. When you're ready to maybe step up to a second microphone, you may want to then take a look at a dynamic microphone, something like the Shure SM57, which is like the staple of every recording studio. Again, very affordable, about $99 US, and you can record everything from a guitar to drums to vocals, acoustic guitar uh, on the SM57. So you have your large diaphragm condenser mic and you have your dynamic microphone like the SM57. The difference between the two is in the large diaphragm condenser microphone, you're gonna to tend to get a lot more uh, 
uh, of a pleasing higher frequency sounds than maybe something like the SM57. So it gives you a larger range of frequencies that are more pleasing to the ear, typically in a large diaphragm condenser microphone. So that's why I would recommend that first. Now the other thing you want to make sure that you, um, that you take a look at is when we talk about large diaphragm condenser microphones, you got to be aware of whether or not that microphone needs to be powered by phantom power. Uh, and you want to make sure that your audio interface can provide that phantom power to that microphone. And again, the good news is most audio interfaces today, even the ones as little as $99 in price, will have phantom power. But that's just something to be aware of. If you're going to get a large diaphragm condenser microphone, be aware if it needs phantom power. And if it does, make sure that your audio interface can provide that phantom power. Now we also want to talk about microphone cables. This is something that I see most people uh, make mistakes with. Uh, we, get, we spend a lot of money on our audio interface, on our microphones, on our computers, and then we go out and we buy the cheapest microphone cable that we can buy. And I can tell you that there is a real difference between a real inexpensive microphone cable and an expensive microphone cable. You do kind of get what you pay for. I would highly recommend that if you're looking for a microphone cable, that you're looking, um, and you, you're looking for a name brand, things like Monster Cable or Mogami. Um, are two of them are, are name brands and there are others. Again, do your research, go to your favorite online retailer like Sweetwater or Musicians Friends and then make sure that you buy a good quality microphone cable. A good quality microphone cable for say a 15 foot, 20 foot cable is gonna run you somewhere between 30 and about $75. So if your budget allows it, spend some extra money, get a really good cable, it's gonna last you for a lifetime. Companies like Monster Cable offer a lifetime warranty and that's super important. And you wanna make sure you get a good cable because the signal that comes from your microphone to your audio interface, that cable connection is super important. And if you get a real inexpensive, no name brand cable, they can get damaged easily, they can degrade your sounds, you can have all kinds of noise and hiss and stuff going on in that signal. We don't want that. We want a nice clean uh, path between our microphone and our audio interface and that has everything to do with the cable. So make sure that when you buy your microphone cables that you spend a little time and a little extra money if you can to get a real good quality cable. And lastly, let's also talk about the microphone stand. This is another accessory that a lot of beginners make a mistake. They buy real expensive microphones and they put them on very inexpensive stands. Now as we're talking about in this video, you don't need to spend a lot of money on your microphone, but even if you spend $300 on a large con uh, diaphragm condenser microphone, that is still a considerable amount of money. And just like with microphones, microphone stands, you can buy a $10 microphone stand and you can buy a $150 microphone stand. Now what I would suggest you do, especially if you're going to buy a fairly expensive microphone over the three, four, five hundred dollar range, that you want to buy a microphone stand that is built of high quality. You want to buy a microphone stand that when you put your large diaphragm condenser microphone in, that when you put it on the boom arm, let's say you have a, a microphone stand with a boom arm, that when you put that microphone on, you want to make sure that the that the microphone stand doesn't tip over. You want to buy a microphone stand that is built of high quality, that's going to last you a lifetime. Again, spend a couple extra bucks, just like on the microphone cable, and get a good quality stand to protect that investment, your microphone. So the last component we're going to talk about in this video is you need some way to monitor the recording that you just made into your brand new computer and your brand new digital audio workstation, right? So we have our computer, we have our interface, we have our DAW, we have our microphone, we have our cable, and now we've recorded into our computer. Well, we have to be able to listen back and we have to be able to monitor what we just recorded, or we have to be able to monitor when we're playing what we're recording, right? So there's two trains of thought here. Now again, if you're a beginner and you have a budget that is somewhat limited, um, I would suggest getting a good pair of studio headphones and do all your monitoring and your mixing through those studio headphones. Again, you want to do some research and just not buy any old cheap pair of headphones and you don't want to use something like earbuds or anything like that. You want to use a decent set of, of studio quality headphones that have a closed back on there that doesn't let sound escape. That's what I would recommend. A lot of, most headphones are either closed back, they're either semi-open or they're open back. I like to use closed back headphones, closed eared headphones. I use KRK headphones. You can find them on Amazon for about 120, 150 bucks. I'll put the link in the description box below. But whether you use KRKs or PreSonus or Sonys or any of the other name brands that are out there, do some research, buy, buy your, uh, find yourself a good pair of studio quality headphones, again, and that will suffice if you're just starting out. 
once you want to take the next step up or if there's money in your budget and you want to get something a little bit better of a monitoring system you may want to look at some studio monitors like the one sitting behind me over my left and right shoulders here now monitors again come in all different shapes and sizes and they also come in all different price points from very inexpensive to super expensive now like I said we're talking about a, be, a, a beginner setup here. So again, the good news is you don't need to spend a ton of money. You wanna look for an active, which is, means a powered speaker system as opposed to a passive speaker system. If you get passive speakers, then you need to have an amplifier to amplify those speakers and they can become very expensive. You wanna get yourself a good pair of uh, active near field monitors. Again, there's a whole host of companies that make these at very affordable prices, PreSonus, KRK, Mackie, Focal, those are the four main brands that are out there and there's others, Yamaha, and there's some other ones and I'll put the links in the description box below. But the good news is again, if you're gonna buy monitors and you're just starting out, you really don't need to spend more than $300 for the pair, $150 each. Now when you're shopping online or you're going to your local uh, music store to buy monitors, when you're taking a look at the prices, a lot of times the prices are per speaker. So be aware of that. They're not always sold in pairs, even though you would want to have two of them, right? A left and a right. But they're not always sold that way and they're not always listed that way. So take care in that. But $150 to $200 each or three to $400 a pair, you can get a really nice set of near field studio monitors for your home studio that you can use for both monitoring as you're playing and singing, as well as when you're mixing and mastering your home recordings. So in summary, let's talk about the five things quickly again. We have first our computer, Mac or PC, doesn't matter. Just try to get the fastest processor you can get. And again, max out the RAM in the computer, whether it's a new computer or whether it's a computer you already own. Eight gigs of memory minimum, try to max it out. Memory's cheap, it doesn't matter whether you use Mac or PC. Audio interface is number two. Again, if you're just starting out, you don't need to spend more than $300 and you wanna take care to make sure that you know how many inputs you need. Don't think about what you're using it for today. What do you think your studio is gonna need a year or two from now? If you're gonna record a full band, especially a drum kit, you're gonna need something with at least eight microphone inputs. If you're just a singer songwriter or only recording one instrument or two instruments at a time, then you can get something with only two inputs on it. And one other note, make sure that if you're gonna have a microphone that has phantom power requirements that that audio interface provides the 48 volts of phantom power and also make sure that your connectivity, whether it's Firewire, USB or Thunderbolt on your computer is also on your audio interface. Third, we need to talk about the DAW again. Again, there's lots of choices. I personally recommend PreSonus Studio One, but you can use Cubase, you can use Reaper. If you have a Mac, it comes with GarageBand. You don't need to spend any money. That's a fabulous DAW. Or Apple Logic, which is the upgrade. That's an awesome DAW as well. And finally, Pro Tools. Whatever DAW you choose is fine. They all do the same thing. They're all a recording studio in a box. But the key is you wanna look online and see where are the training resources, especially the free training resources, where are the online communities that can help you get started. And again, you can always check out homerecordingmadeeasy.com and check out the Made Easy series. I have an entire product line of training specifically for PreSonus Studio One that can help you right away. And you can also check out the videos on this channel, Home Recording Made Easy. I have a 15 video series for beginners in Studio One absolutely free so that might help you as well but once you pick your digital audio workstation i recommend that you stick with it and you learn it and you master it and don't fall into the trap thinking that one daw is better than another because it is all personal preference and they all do the one thing they allow you to record music and you can achieve a professional sounding recording using any digital audio workstation that's on the market now we want to talk about microphones again in summary again Look for a large diaphragm condenser microphone. If this is your first microphone you're gonna buy, it's a great all-purpose microphone. Make sure that whatever microphone you choose, make sure uh, that whether you need the phantom power requirements as we talked about a couple of minutes ago. Make sure you buy a real good high quality microphone cable and a good quality microphone stand to protect that microphone from falling on the floor. Uh, you want something that is sturdy, robust, that's gonna last you a lifetime. And once you have all of that, talk about monitoring. 
start off with a good pair of studio headphones and then move on to some speakers like you see sitting over my shoulders here when you're ready to jump up to that next level. Again, there are lots of companies that make affordable stuff that will help you make better music in your home studio and help you get started right away. All the links will be in the description box below. So I hope this video was helpful. Those are the five components of setting up your very first home studio. Again, please hit that subscribe button. Follow me on Facebook, facebook.com slash home recording made easy. There's tons of free content on there, tons of free training on there to help you get started making better music in your home studio. And until the next video, this has been David Vignola with homerecordingmadeeasy.com and I will speak to you all soon. Take care.